This is lesson 5.4b, the second part of 5.4. We're going to be dividing a decimal by a decimal. In the first part of this lesson, 5.4a, we learned how to divide a decimal by a whole number. When we divide a decimal by a decimal, we first change the decimal divisor to a whole number by multiplying by a power of 10. Then we multiply the dividend by the same power of 10. A power of a number is the amount of times a number is multiplied by itself. So 10 to the first power is, that would be 10 with a little one exponent, that's 10 to the first power, or it's just 10. We have 110. 10 to the second power, that would be 10 with a little two exponent, means we have two of these tens multiplied. So it's 10 times 10. We have two of them. That's equal to 100. And 10 to the third power, well, now we have three of them. We have 10 times 10 times 10, which is 1,000, because 10 times 10 is 100, and 100 times 10 is 1,000. It's how many times we use that number as a factor. So we're going to use 10 as a factor three times, because there's a little three exponent. So if we have 4 and 8 tenths divided by 1 and 2 tenths, we have a decimal point here that needs to be moved over because they, this needs to be turned into a whole number and this. So we're going to move this one jump. That means we're going to move this one one jump. We're multiplying by one power of 10. If we multiply 1 and 2 tenths times 10, we get the whole number 12. And if we multiply 4 and 8 tenths by 10, we get the whole number 48. So this is going to move one jump to become 12, and this is going to move one jump to here to become 48. For each power of 10, we move the decimal point one jump to the right. Here we have 12 hundredths. We're trying to divide 48 hundredths by 12 hundredths. We turn them into a whole number by moving this decimal point one, two jumps to the right. That means we're going to move this one one, two jumps to the right. 12 hundredths times 100 is equal to 12 as a whole number. And 48 hundredths times 100 is 48 as a whole number. To move the decimal point two jumps, we multiply by 10 to the second power, 10 times 10. Here's one jump. Here's the other jump. That means it's going to be times 100. Now we have 12 going into 48. We have 48 divided by 12. Knowing that the decimal points will both move right the same amount of jumps, we see how many jumps are needed to make the divisor a whole number and just apply those jumps to the dividend. We need one, two jumps, so we're going to go one, two jumps, and that's where this decimal point is and this decimal point is. Now, instead of 1 and 36 hundredths divided by 4 hundredths, we have 136 divided by 4. We use the standard algorithm, the regular way to do long division. 4 can't fit into 1, so we're not putting the answer there. 4 can fit into 13 three times because 4 times 3 is 12. We subtract that 12. We get a 1. It's the 6 is turned to come down. 4 fits into 16 four times because 4 times 4 is 16. We subtract the 16, get a 0 remainder. We know the answer is 34. Sometimes we'll need to add zeros to the dividend. As placeholders, when the dividend doesn't have enough digits to move the decimal point to the right, here we have 4 and 8 tenths divided by 12 hundredths. We need this decimal point to move 2 jumps. And if we do that to the dividend, we're going to be over here. There's nothing here. We can put a zero there as a placeholder. Now we have 480 divided by 12. 12 can't fit into 4, so we fit it into 48. 12 times 4 is 48. We subtract that and get a zero. It's that zero's turn to come down, and 12 goes into zero zero times, so we put a zero up there. We know 480 divided by 12 is 40. This says 1 inch is equivalent to 2 and 54 hundredths centimeters. How many inches are in 66 
and four hundredths centimeters. So we think, how many times can we fit 2.54 into 66.04? So we write our problem and we need to move the decimal point two jumps to make this a whole number. So we're going to need to move this two jumps. One, two. And we ask ourselves, how many times does 254 fit into 6? It can't. So we're not putting the answer here. How many times can 254 fit into 66? None. So we're not putting the answer here. And notice our decimal point is over here now because we moved it. And I'm not putting it up there because we're actually doing like whole numbers now because we moved the decimal point. We're actually doing like 6,604 divided by 254. So we ask ourselves, can 254 fit into 660? Well, yeah, because I know 250 and 250 is 500. So I'm sure it could fit two times. And we multiply 254 times 2 and get 508. I don't think we could fit another one in there. So we know it's, it's 2. We know that 254 times 2 is 508. We do our subtraction, and we have 0, and we're trying to take 8 away, and we can't. So we turn this into a 5, we turn that into a 10, we got a 2, we got a 5, we got a 1, and now it's the 4's turn to come down. How many times can 254 fit into 1,524? And we can estimate 250 will fit into 1,500, like 6 times. If we try 7, we can do a little multiplication on the side and see that that's too much. But if we estimate 6, we can do it, and we see it is 1,524. So we're going to put a 6 up here. We're going to subtract that product and get a 0. So we see that there are 26 inches in 66 and 400 centimeters. So in the last video, when this was a whole number and this was a decimal number, we just brought the decimal point straight up. But because this was a decimal number and this was a decimal number, we had to move it first. Then we did our division. Okay, big difference. So we're going to move on to Lesson 5.5 now about applying operations with rational numbers. It's split into two parts. 5.5a is going to be interpreting a rational number word problem. Keep trying your best. Have a great day, and I'll see you next time. Bye.